All right, I want to welcome everyone that's joining us now by TV, by radio, by live streaming from all around the world. Uh, if you're listening to radio, uh, please uh, feel free to go on the website and join us at www.theshepherdshouse.net, Glasgow, Kentucky. Uh, and uh, join us. If you're watching on TV, uh, give somebody a call and tell them what channel uh, that you're watching this on. And if you're um, watching by live streaming, uh, please consider sharing this uh, on your timeline. We're uh, believing that our ministry is going to continue to grow. As people uh, share this on their timeline, as people uh, uh, reaches out uh, with telephone and invites other people uh, to come and to join us in our ministry. I'm going to uh, give you a little bit of an update. Just got back from uh, Portugal. Are we on the live streaming back there? Okay, uh, we just got back from Portugal, and uh, I know that there's many people are interested in what happened. I've had people send me emails from uh, Chicago uh, asking about how did the trip go, and I've had people call me from here, and different ones run across me on the street, uh, and uh, so I'm going to try to give everybody a real quick uh, update uh, on what happened when we were in Portugal. We landed in Portugal on uh, Wednesday morning. Uh, uh, and uh, we had uh, the 18th, I guess it was, of July, and we were met at the airport with such love and passion with uh, beautiful bouquets of flowers and a uh, big hug and a kiss on each cheek. And the pastor's wife said, you will be hugged and you will be kissed many times. Uh, while here in Portugal, this is our custom. And uh, I was many times in the church uh, uh, the Christian ladies, most especially, would come up and hug us and kiss us on each side of the cheek and welcome us into every service. And they are so passionate uh, to one another. And it's different than it is being in America. They respect their pastor. I know you've never saw that very often here in America. And I can say that jokingly, but unfortunately, uh, it's in many cases true. But when the pastor walks in, it's if the greatest movie star just came to church and we hadn't saw you in two days. Uh, they run and they grab him and they kiss him on each cheek. The men hugs him with passion. Their face glow, uh, glows and they, I mean, you can't carry your suitcases over there. They want to carry them for you at no charge. They're offering you water. They're offering you tea. They're offering you coffee every little bit. And they drink espresso coffee. Uh, comes in a cup about this tall, about as big around as a silver dollar with a little handle on it. And boy, it sure does have punch in it, I can tell you that. It's strong, really strong. As the old country saying, it'll grow hair on your chest. It might grow hair on top of your head if you're bald. I don't know. I hadn't really looked and seen, but it's strong. Yet a little of that goes a long ways. But anyway, uh, the services, the worship. Uh, I wish that America could go to Portugal and see how they worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, you can. Uh, the church was packed. Uh, the day that I preached, I was standing in a pulpit. I could see down in the lower part of the church, the fellowship area. There were people standing, and some were sitting down there because there was no seating capacity up in the top. Everybody, uh, it, it was crowded. It was packed in there like sardines. Uh, but they came, and when they worshipped, everyone stood to their feet, hands in the air, praising God, tears running down the side of their face, the young, the old, uh, the rich, the poor, the most of them were poor. Uh, but, but anyway, they were praising God in unity, one mind in one accord, and they showed so much respect, and they treated us as if Paul and Silas had came from America to preach to them. So much uh, respect and so much appreciation. They wanted to buy us gifts and do something for us continually all the time that, they were, that we were there. They treated us as if we were kings. Uh, I'm telling you, it was wonderful. We got a chance to see the beautiful sights before we left. But back to the spiritual things. Uh, the, the Lord came and he blessed. And the pastor uh, said this. Uh, he said that uh, when he was praying back sometime during the first 12 days of January, 
this year, 2018, he said the Lord uh, showed him that there would be two men coming from a far away that would he would not be able to understand what they were saying that was going to come and he would send revival when those men came and there would be a turnaround in his church and the Spirit of God would, would come and bless his church. Pastor Eduardo uh, had told the congregation that and he also told me that later uh, in, uh, when we were eating together, his wife uh, interpreted for us. He cannot understand English, but me and him connected real quickly. He sure does have the love of God. God in his heart. He's a real thing, and it's such a blessing to work with him. And Pastor Jacob and his wife, uh, Luna, we appreciate that, Pastor Eduardo and his wife, Manuel. Uh, we appreciate that. Uh, such loving people. But uh, then the also there was another preacher that came up and said, uh, can I talk just a moment with you? He, he told me his name. He was from Portugal. He could speak English, broken English, but I could understand him really well. And this is what he said. He said, five years ago, the Lord sent me here to establish this church and to organize this church. That was what God sent me here for. He said, this year, he has sent you to bring the Spirit to the church. Now, what he meant was the anointing. Now, the Spirit did not come from me and, and Pastor Allen that went with me. Uh, that was not what he was trying to say. He was trying to say at the appointed time when God sent us here, God released his Spirit and the Spirit came as we did because of the obedience of them and the obedience of from us. That was what he was getting at. I didn't want some of you religious negative hounds to get a hold of that. But anyway, um, I wanted to be able to explain that. Uh, so anyhow, uh, it, it was so um, it was so prophetic what God had set up. And then uh, also the uh, minister uh, Ricardo that's over the outreach ministry or the street ministry team from Canada. He was originally born and raised in Pakistan. Um, he speaks broken English, but you can understand him really well. So anointed, so full of the Holy Ghost, so bold, so straightforward with the love of the Lord. It absolutely amazes me. It was worth the trip almost just to hear him pray and to testify about what God has done in his life and how he was converted to Christianity, and he found Jesus as his personal Savior. Now then, he ministered to Muslims and uh, Hindus uh, trying to reach them with the wonderful gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and to share the truth of the kingdom of God with thousands of people all over the world. But he told me that he was scheduled to go to France last week. Uh, and he said that the Lord told him a few weeks ago uh, to cancel his um, trip to France and to come to Portugal and to join in with these two that's coming from America, that God was going to do a new thing and that there was going to be a turnaround. And they said that this was the most spiritual services that they'd ever had in that church, that the Holy Ghost came and moved in that church. And I want you to understand me and Brother Allen both said this, we have been to heaven this weekend. It was out of this world. I had my handkerchief soaked in just a few minutes. I mean, I never have cried as hard in my life and jumped as much as what I did when I was over there. I mean, it was out of them, out of this world. And the people, while they were praising God, there was a, a young black lady, looked like she was about 20 to 22 years old. She danced as David danced before the Lord. And I know this is going to turn a, I call some of the American people to turn a flip that you've never cried over three times in 40 years and I know you can't comprehend this but she was dancing before the Lord and uh, as they were praising God she would run to this end of the church and jump in the air and spin and never did look at the congregation and gave praise to God with a dress down to her ankles amen uh, the Pentecostals over there dressed like Pentecostals I just thought I'd throw that out there Amen. But anyhow, anyhow, the Spirit of the Lord was all over her. Man, how they praised God. And it was worth the trip just to see her 
Praise God. And it was out of this world. And every word that we said had to be translated. Even when we were praying, they wanted us to pray like this. Lord, we come to you today. And then they would translate that. And then we'd continue on with the prayer. And the tears would run down the side of their face. Now I'm going to give you a report on what happened. We had 15 saved during street ministry, during the conference, they give God praise. Hallelujah. Amen. And I talked to, uh, to Brother Ricardo. He said, I do not mishandle the word of God. The ones that got saved actually got saved. He said, I'm not trying to work up numbers. I'm not trying to share the word and claim that people got saved when they did not. He said, I work with them until they really get saved. Amen. Praise the Lord. That really made me feel good. And then in, in, in there was uh, at least one Muslim and uh, there was a couple of Hindus got saved. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Then there was another religion that I can't remember what they called it. Uh, somebody translated for them and that man got saved. That was part of the 15. In the conference, there was three saved, five rededications. I had an opportunity on Sunday morning when I preached to tell of my experience of getting saved. I, and, and, and I preached about Legion that was in the tombs and how that he came out, amen, and Jesus called him out of the tombs, out of the grave of death, amen, out of de despair, amen, and he found the real uh, God, Jesus Christ, the, the son of the most high God, and how that his life was turned around is Jesus Christ called him from death and called him from the grave into his marvelous light, into love and joy and peace. And I told them about my experience of getting saved, my son uh, having two types of leukemia uh, and how the God healed him and uh, the stories of the things that I went through. Uh, during ministry down through the years, when I got ready to pray for the people that came up for prayer, there was a woman that had cancer that had one of those rags on her head because she uh, had treatments and the treatments had caused her hair to come out of her head. She came up with tears in her eyes, could not understand English, but the Portuguese interpreter uh, interpreted as I prayed and as she shook, under the power of God, and tears began to flow down her face as we called on the Lord for healing for her body. She got a touch. I don't know if she got completely healed. I did not hear from her whether she got healed or not, but she got a touch from the Lord that day, and her faith was increased um, uh, wonderfully. Then there was another lady, uh, many. I, there, I probably prayed for 30 people, and so did Brother Allen that day. It was out of this world, the response that we had uh, on Sunday morning. But anyway, and on Saturday night. Uh, but, but anyway, uh, on Tuesday night, there, we had a meeting on Tuesday night, a small meal. Those folks, you thought the Baptist and the Pentecostal was bad about eating in America. You ought to go over there. The Portuguese eat for everything. I don't know if they mow the yard, if they get together and eat or not, but they do everything time that to go to church. They eat, 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 but, and that's fine. You can tell I like that, but anyway, we got together on Tuesday, on Tuesday night before we left on the following, on the following morning, Wednesday morning, and uh, we had a little meeting there, refreshments, and uh, they said this lady here from India is 34 years old, and she's had a lung disease for many, many, many years. And when she begins to work and labor and starts getting tired, she can't breathe. And said, this has been such a hindrance to her. And said, that she's got something she wants to say to you. Tears begin to come up in her eyes. And she said, you pray for me Sunday. I said, I remember you. She said, I had lung disease, can't breathe. And I said, I remember that. She said, since then, she said, 100% healed. All of it's gone. I can breathe. <laughs> Touch me. Hey, man, sometimes you don't hear back from people that's prayed for. And she said, thank you for praying for me. I said, you're welcome. I, it was an honor for me to be chosen by God.
and for the Lord to set this up and allow me to be able to go and to be a part of this, it was so refreshing. It was so good, amen, and to see people of other cultures here in America, somehow or another, we get this in our mind that you got to be going to our church, our denomination, out here in between two oak trees on the backside of a bluff and grandpa buried in a cemetery to ever really know God. But it's not like that, amen. And when you get in other countries, you get to thinking, man, I wish I could go back to America and my people would worship like that, amen. This morning, if I'd have been in Portugal, some of you had been out on the floor and every one of you had been dancing and shouting and crying. And I'm not throwing rocks at you. I'm just telling you, there's where America used to be. And today, because of religion and liberalism, amen, you see where America's at today. Amen. Now then, we're stuck in the mud, cold and complacent. Uh, can't hardly get people to go to church. Uh, amen. And they're dead as a zombie when they get there. Can I hear an amen? Can I hear oh me? Amen. So anyway, it was it was a blessing to be there. I wanted to share that with you and to tell you there's other people in other cultures on the, on the other side of the world that loves Jesus more sometimes than some that's in America. Amen. They're fired up. They're prayed up. Amen. And when they got it, they really got it. They're not trying to impress somebody and trying to prove to you what I got. I got it when I'm thir- when I was 13 years old. I'm colder than a frog right now, but I know that I got it. Boy, it got quiet in here. But the truth is the truth. Amen. I feel sorry. My heart goes out and sympathizes for America. But I'm glad to be home. America's the best country that there is on the planet, and so far the only one I can get biscuit and gravy in. I was so glad to get back and get a biscuit. They don't have a clue what you're talking about. Even McDonald's in Portugal don't have biscuits. They don't have gravy. Amen. I tell you what, you take a load of hogs and some Martha white flour, well, there are people go crazy. <laughs> no, they, they, they're good cooks. I'm just teasing. But anyway, uh, i got to have a little humor in everything that I do. But it's good to be back home to America. Amen. And, uh, and I love God's people. All right, in St. John's Gospel, chapter number uh, 15. St. John chapter number 15. I want to read just a few verses of Scripture, and then we'll go into 1 John chapter number 4, and we'll read a little bit of Scripture there. 1 John 15 verse 9 says, As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not friends, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of my Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you that ye love one another. In 1 John chapter number 4 and verse number 14 says, And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus <coughs> excuse me, is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God had to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. 
Herein is our love made perfect. The word perfect means complete. That ye may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> there is no fear in love. The perfect love casteth out fear because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can, God, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? <clears throat> and this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God loveth his brother also. Let us pray. Father, in the loving name of Jesus, come in before you once again this day, thanking you, Lord, for being such a good God. Thanking you, Lord, for hearing and answering prayer. Thanking you, Lord, for giving us a safe trip to Portugal and for the anointing that you gave us. And Father, for the things that we experienced, the things that we felt, the things that was accomplished in your work and for the kingdom of God. And I thank you, Lord, for what? Lord, that we were able to, to see and to, uh, Lord, the people we were able to meet and the things that you honored us to be able to be a part of. And we are so humbled at the calling, Lord, that you put upon us and the ability, uh, Lord, that you gave us that we do not have within ourselves and also for the safe flight that you gave us, Lord. And Father, we thank you, Lord, for always being with us, Lord, in everything that we do. Give us a heart to love people. Give us a heart of passion. Give us resources to be able to reach some multitudes. Help churches to come on board with this ministry as we expand and go forth sending clothes and Bibles to other nations. Sending, Lord, school materials and shoes to other nations, traveling, Lord, to other areas and sharing the things that you've done for us in our life in old time, heartfelt salvation and the experience, Lord, of receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost in fire and letting people know how real Jesus is and that he is the door and that he is the author and the finisher of our faith. And Lord, through him, Lord, is the only way to make it into the beautiful kingdom of God. Help us, Lord, to stand against the mouth of hell and proclaim the gospel of peace and the love of Jesus that he has for the broken, the bewildered, those that are cast down. Help them to see there's a Savior, Lord, that reached way below the bottom to reach for those that are cast down and those that are helpless. Lord, help us to preach your word in spirit and in love. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus that we do humbly pray and ask all these things. Amen. Looking back into the word of God, I'm going to be preaching about the love of Jesus, how we need to be spreading the love of Jesus, amen, to a lost in a dying world, amen. If there's ever a time that we pull out of our little religious corners and begin to understand, amen, that there's people out there that are hurting, looking back into the word of God, there was something thing that happened many years ago is Jesus came, the Son of God, the Messiah. Amen. The Bible says he came unto his own, and his own received him not. But to as many that would believe, he gave them power to become the sons of God. Amen. Those that would accept him as being Savior. Amen. Those that were hungry, he gave them an opportunity. Amen. To receive the gospel 
gospel uh, and I've got a plea, amen, to other pastors in the area. I've got a cry, amen, to the ones uh, in our church today. Uh, amen, there's many that are hungry today. Uh, amen, we need to bind together and let's appropriate the gospel. Uh, let's get it out, uh, amen, so the world can hear that there's news uh, through Jesus, in Jesus Christ and hope in Jesus. Well, Brother Jimmy, we need to be a reaching the people in our land first. I agree, but we ain't and we can't. Amen, until they get a hunger. And they're not gonna get a hunger until some of them hits rock bottom. Amen, until they suffer. Some of them is never gonna hear the gospel till they get on their deathbed. And I really hate for cancer to hit anybody. Amen, my son had it. My mother had it. I've lost friends with cancer. And there's a lot of good Christians that have died with cancer and it's broke my heart, but there's multitudes uh, that would have never found Jesus uh, had it not been cancer, uh, amen, or heart disease uh, that brought them near to death's door, uh, amen, and they turned uh, and they repented of their sins, uh, amen, we're living in backslid America today, amen, where the hearts have became cold, uh, amen, and indifferent, uh, amen, and where the word of God, uh, amen, doesn't mount to anything uh, in the eyes of a lot of people, uh, you mentioned Jesus, amen, when you go across the ocean, amen, to people in other countries and their eyes perks up and they have so much respect, amen, for the man of God and the woman of God and respect for the word of God, amen, they walk to church, they'll sit in the church building, let me tell you something, folks, amen, it was cool over there on the outside, but the church that I preached in was well over 100 degrees, and no air conditioners. This is the honest truth. I almost passed out. Amen. I felt myself getting dizzy. It was that hot. Amen. In the church. And then people were jumping and dancing and praise God in over a hundred degree temperature. And people in America today, amen, they can't go to church. Amen. Unless the thermostat is set on 70 degrees. Amen. Because, amen, they don't want to be uncomfortable. And you take the patty pews. Amen, out of the churches today, amen, some of them would go. Amen, listen, when you got a hunger, amen, you'll sit down on the ground if you need to, amen, to hear the word of God. Amen, the hunger that to have, amen, for the word of God, what are you trying to say? If America don't, know, don't want Jesus, I found a whole lot of other people that does, and they're hungry, amen, if we'll get this thing out of our mind, amen, that all Muslims are evil, they're not all evil, some of them is wanting to find out about the real God, Jesus Christ, amen, and they're being converted, amen, by the thousands around the world. I don't like Islam. I disagree with the Muslim faith. I don't want to be connected with that in any way, but let me share Jesus with them. If America don't want it, amen, some of them do, amen, and some of the Hindus is hungry, amen. We've got some calloused over and some blessed, amen, religious today, uh, amen, people in the carnal mind, I was sharing this, uh, amen, with the church earlier, amen, their custom there is to kiss one another, uh, amen, on the cheek and greet one another. In America, that's not our custom. Uh, if you've done that in America, half the church would commit adultery, amen, that's how carnal minded, uh, amen, the churches it became. Come on now, stay with me this morning. Amen, you know I'm preaching the truth to you, uh, amen, you understand what I'm saying, uh, amen, the love and the passion, uh, amen, man, it's just like like having Christmas, uh, every day you go to church over there, amen, they're telling one another, I hadn't saw you since Sunday night, uh, it's been so long, give me a hug, uh, I love you, uh, amen, and you can see the sparkle in their eyes in America, amen, we're thinking about our bloney sandwich, uh, amen, at 12.15, uh, amen, thinking about our air conditioner and our recliner, amen, and what we're gonna do and how we can build on to the garage, because uh, we got so much junk uh, that we don't even know what we've got, uh, and I need to build on, and the carpenter's gonna come by this evening uh, and go over the plans before I come into church tonight. That is, if we come to church, uh, and the most of churches in America, amen, don't even have church on Sunday night, uh, amen, and Wednesday night anymore, uh, amen. And listen, uh, uh, folks, uh, there's people in other countries uh, go every time they have the door open, uh, and this is what they told me. Said when we, when uh, uh, one of the families here gets saved, uh, they win everybody in their family, and moms and dads and brothers and sisters and uncles and kids and every 
one of them goes to church from then on. Every time the doors is open, it's, well, Brother Jimmy, them people is poor. Yeah, and they pay their tithes. I want you to write that down. Amen. And, uh, and uh, put that on your refrigerator. Amen. Some of the poorest people in America, amen, pay their tithes because they can't afford it. I'm going to go back and say that again. That felt so good. I said there's a whole lot of people in other countries uh, pays their tithes because they cannot afford to pay their tithes. Well, that don't make any sense. Yes, it does because it's a faith thing. Amen. If the people in America would pay their tithes that they could pay, amen, you wouldn't, you'd be surprised, amen, what our churches could do, amen, if we'd have a vision. Amen. See, it's about the love. Amen. We love him. Speaking of Jesus, amen, because he first loved us. We need to love one another. Amen. Today, we are so religious. I remember just before I went to Portugal, all the the warnings that came out, uh, amen, from people, many people, uh, amen, meant well, but they told me, said, uh, Brother Jimmy, it's dangerous. Uh, we'll be a praying for you. I hate to see you go over there in that country because it's dangerous. Uh, did you know they're locking them up uh, uh, in, in other countries all the time? Christians uh, are being locked up uh, in other, other countries, uh, and sometimes there's just no reason to be locked up. Uh, they're doing that right here in America. All you got to do is have a stepdaughter that you tell can't go to a dance uh, and and she'll tell somebody you touched her in the wrong place and honey, you're going to prison. It don't matter whether you're innocent or not. Amen, don't tell me. Amen, there's no fear of being locked up in America. Oh, Brother Jimmy, I'm scared of terrorism. You better get out of America and take the flight this evening in some other direction because America has become the number one terrorism place. Amen, when I was in Portugal, I never saw any type of violence whatsoever. But I got on my computer and I looked at the news in America and there was a shooting every other day. Amen, three shot and seven injured or, or something like that going on every day in America. Amen, one thing right after another. Uh, amen, and I thought I know people means well. Uh, amen, and see the devil tries to block you from doing anything that's right. Uh, I love America. I'm, I'm American, red-blooded America. There's nobody loves America any more than what I do, but there's a fear that's been put out. Uh, amen, there by the devil. Amen, to keep Americans quiet. Uh, amen, preachers sitting in Churches, uh, and I heard a pastor friend of mine, or I read of what a pastor friend of mine uh, uh, put on the the, the, uh, the Facebook this morning, and it's absolutely truth. Uh, uh, pastors in America, amen, are sitting in small churches uh, with small attendance uh, and having to take money out of his own pocket uh, to keep the light bills going, uh, amen, and, and the things paid inside the church, uh, amen, because the church won't pay their tithes, uh, and they won't come together because of intimidation uh, and because of fear, uh, Amen, and fear is out there, and people excuse themselves. You'd be surprised of the people I heard make statements like this. Well, now, y'all are going over there to do a good work, but uh, didn't y'all have some type of split a few years ago and that boy going with you? Uh, wasn't y'all in uh, some type of split? And I said, yeah. So? Amen. You have a disagreement. You forgive one another. You get together and work for the kingdom of God. Amen. There's some people that are so small they can't comprehend that and they want to throw that up in their face. Amen. Like you're going over there, but at one time you was a fighting. Yeah, but you've been sitting down. Dead as a hammer. Won't pay your tithes. Your church has got $20,000 in a saving account somewhere and you wouldn't feed one hungry person in Africa and do a blessed thing and you want to throw rocks at me. Amen. I'm getting up and making you feel bad about what you're doing, not doing. Hey Amen. That's where a lot of people are today. Hey Amen. The churches that are dead. We're never going to have a big nest egg. Hey Amen. Because we're going to feed somebody. Hey Amen. We're going to give somebody some Bibles. Hey Amen. We're going to send some clothes. I'm going to get on an airplane, fly to the other side of the world, and tell them Jesus, the real Son of the real God, loves you, died for you. And if you'll come to Him, He'll forgive you of your sins. Amen. Uh, today you have an altar call. Uh, amen. It's almost like that Jim Johnson uh, uh, advertisement they had. I think it was Jim Johnson down in Bowling Green years ago. We're having a push, pull, or drag sale. I thought, yeah, it's about like it is. That's the church in America. 
Let's all stand. Let's, let's sing a verse of just as I am, and then we'll have a push, pull, a drag. That's the only way you're going to get them up here, amen, to pray because they'll look bug-eyed at you, amen, the whole time you're preaching, amen, and the devil will give them an excuse, amen, and they'll sit back at the altar, amen, and wonder about that hypocrite sitting across the aisle and how that person offended me and done things that was wrong. If you're so blessed little that you can't get up and go to church because somebody done you wrong, I would to God that you'd get saved and get something other than a power suggestion and a motion. Whew. Brother Jimmy, you better not leave America anymore. Let me tell you something, honey. Amen. While I was over there, I'd say something like this. Jesus really does love you. And then they'd have to interpret it. And then I could say the next word. And I kept telling them, I'm sorry. I'm used to preaching 100 mile an hour. And I thought when I get back over in America, I'm going to cut her loose again too. There won't be anything to hold me back. Amen. I told them the truth. But I don't have to stop over here and have it interpreted. Amen. I could just go right on and make you mad. Well, Brother Jimmy, if you make me mad, I'm won't come back anymore. If you're that weak, we didn't need you in the first place. Amen, you need to get saved and maybe you'll go somewhere else, amen, where somebody can preach to you and you'll actually get the real thing. <sighs> amen, some folks today, instead of getting saved, I believe they had cucumbers for lunch. Amen, and when they burped, they got to feeling better and they thought they meant Jesus. Amen, listen, when you get the real thing, amen, you'll walk right, you'll talk right. Amen, you'll be excited. Amen, when they pass the offering plate, amen, it won't take therapy and you won't have to go see your counselor and increase your medication when you put a $20 bill in the offering plate. Come on, I'm preaching to somebody in America today. Amen, but you'll gladly give. It'll feel good. Amen, when you sit down and look over your money, amen, you'll stop thinking, I believe I could give some of that to the carpet fund in the church. I believe I could give some of that, amen, to help that preacher buy some Bibles. Whew. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Amen, we got uh, two or three churches that's beginning to send money in, amen, to help us in what we're doing. Makes me feel really good, uh, amen, praise God. Uh, amen, the other churches that are around in the area, amen, that's got money tied up at Coca-Cola Bottling Company, amen, because you want a good return for the church's money. Amen, that's just about as spiritual, uh, amen, as cutting your toenails. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, amen. We're in a, uh, a bad time today. Uh, amen. Listen, when there's no love, uh, amen, there's no compassion, uh, amen, like we need to have in the house of God. Uh, amen. In Portugal, they're kissing and hugging each other. In America, one sits on this side uh, and that one sits over there on that side. Uh, amen. We get so religious, we get to thinking, uh, I don't believe I want any of what you got off on me. Uh, I'm going to sit on the other side of the church. Uh, amen. Listen, they'll sit bug eyed. Uh, amen. Cause somebody hurt their feelings and they just can't get over it. Amen, somebody told me the other day, they said some people, amen, when they have a problem, amen, it causes a problem when you try to work together later. And I thought if you got the same Jesus I got, amen, he won't let you keep that stuff harbored up in your heart. You'll have to get over it, get it on the blood, get it behind you, amen, learn to worship and praise God and to love one another. Amen, you understand what I'm saying today. Amen, Jesus today wants our love. Amen, his love, excuse me. Amen, to be inside of us. That his love might be full inside of us. That his love might remain. Amen, is what he said in the word of God. Amen, there's been people today that went and got a little bit of dose of love. Amen, they got to fit in a little bit better. Amen, but today they don't have very much because they ain't sure they got anything when they, when they went to the altar in the first place. Place. Amen. I'm not telling you that you can't fall away. I'm just telling you there's some of them never did get it in the first place. Amen. Hear what I'm saying today. Amen. Because if you really got salvation, if Jesus really lives in your heart, amen, listen, when you do wrong, amen, there'll be a brass band playing in your heart and you won't feel right till you make yourself an altar somewhere, amen, at home, in the automobile, or in the house of God, and you pray your way out of trouble, and you get over that person that done you wrong. And let me talk to some of you, amen, that's been offended by people. Hey Amen. We get to think of that person really hurt my feelings. Why is that person over there out of church because that person hurt their feelings? Hey Amen. You can't understand it because it was their feelings that got hurt instead of your feelings that got hurt. Hey Amen. But see, when it's us, hey Amen, it's a whole different story. 
It ain't amazing how we judge one another, how we condemn one another, amen, how we point fingers, amen, at one another, amen. I had somebody tell me here just a few days ago, he said, well, I hope you, everything goes out all right. He said, I tell you what, there's a lot of people over there in that country. I said, yeah, I know there's a lot of people over there. They, and they said this, and I sure hope you make it back. And I said, well, I plan on it. I plan on making it back, amen. Uh, they don't tell how many people said this. Well, you know, them airplanes is going down all the time. Uh, yeah, I know it keeps giving me words of encouragement. Hey, man, I know that they go down every now and then, but not all the time. Uh, they ain't been one lost in several years, and they ain't no telling. When I'm sitting at JFK Airport uh, in, in New York for over five hours, <laughs> Wait another day, them planes was taken off about every three or four minutes. They had them lined up uh, when we took off. There was three or four in front of us. We had to sit and wait after we was on the runway for them to just about get out of sight and then another and take off and then another and take off. Amen? Uh, and, and you don't hear but one uh, airplane crash uh, ever so many years. Uh, amen? And, and listen, most of the people, uh, amen, are scared of airplanes. Uh, amen? Uh, be scared to death, won't get on one. Amen? And you feel safe in your car and get killed a half a mile from the church. Amen, but somebody on the wrong side of the road. I had a fear for airplanes. Amen, I had a fear of riding an airplane. But the same Jesus that saved me took it away. Amen, let me know that all of this is gonna be okay. Amen, about two days, I may have told this before, but it's so good, I'm gonna tell it again. Amen, about two days before that I got on the airplane. Amen, God gave me a vision. And I saw myself sitting in the seat of that airplane. And I looked over there on that side and there was a man holding on to the wing looking forward and he turned and he looked at me and said my name is Michael and then he turned and he looked back holding that wing up in his hand and I looked to the other side and there was another man looking like this and he turned and he faced me and said my name is Gabriel amen and he turned his head back and looked forward holding on I'm glad he didn't look away he might have run into something up there Amen, that let me know that God, amen, was carrying me over there and God was gonna carry me back. Listen, folks, amen, the Apostle Paul, amen, he was shipwrecked, amen, three different times, I think it was. He didn't drown, he didn't die, amen, but God spared him. Amen, listen, when God's got a calling on your life, amen, listen, the others ought to be thinking, God, you're on the airplane, amen, listen, them that was on the ship, amen, with Apostle Paul, amen, was grateful that he was on board. The angel didn't come and tell the multitude that well, the population that was on the ship everything's going to be all right. He went to the, uh, to the child of God. He went to the servant of the Lord and said, I've got more work for you to do and you're going to be safe. Everybody that abides in the ship shall be saved. Amen. I thought about that. They don't tell you how many times. Amen. As I was sitting there in that airplane. Amen. Nice and peace and quiet. And all at once we'd hit turbulence. I think, well, glory, we just hit another rock in the road. Amen, but God's with us. And I think, hang on over there, Michael. Gabriel, get a good handhold on this thing. Amen, you are holding on to us, but don't let your hands, amen, let them wings slip out of your hands. Amen, but God took care of everything. Listen, when God is in charge, everything is gonna work out all right. When we have the love, amen, of God, amen, the joy of the Lord shall remain. Amen, the joy of the church has been stolen away. Amen. Many today are depressed. Amen. Many are going on medications and having to go see a counselor. Amen. Many are down and many are concerned. Amen. Listen, it's our greed and our fear. The Bible says that perfect love amen casts us out fear. Amen. When you don't have anything you're not worried about losing anything. Amen. When you don't have anything, amen, you're not concerned. Amen. The preacher over there told me, he said, I've been in ministry here for a number of years. Let me tell you what I started out with. He started out with no money. He said, I, right now, I still don't have no money. The whole time I've been serving the Lord, I didn't have any money, but God made a way and he paid every bill the entire time. He's opened up doors. Amen, he's, he's took care of all the ministry needs that I've had. Didn't have anything when I started and I won't have anything when I end, but God gave me everything that I had need of at the appropriate time in his order. Amen, listen, we have fears sometimes. Amen, 
but that fear, amen, the Bible says is torment, amen, listen, to antagonize us, amen, to make us miserable, amen, to lose the joy, unforgiveness, amen, and fear and greed are three of the things that has damaged the American church. Amen, if it wasn't for greed, the preachers would never have to preach on tithing. Boy, y'all quiet here today. I feel the anointing. Amen, I just miss my people in Portugal. They'd have done danced all over the church, me preaching like this. Whew. Praise the Lord, but if you're not guilty, maybe you could dance a little better. Hey, Amen. Did you ever see if you go to a dance somewhere, those that are in a wheelchair don't dance much <laughs> because they're crippled. But then they get a lounge good, boy, I mean, they can cut the rug. Amen. See the difference? Amen. America's in a wheelchair, spiritually speaking today. Amen. They don't have the dance. Amen. They done been so greedy. Amen. They done been poked and pushed and pulled by the devil. Amen. Listen, things, religious uh, uh, ideas, religious spirits. Uh, amen. Tries to entrap. Uh, amen. Different ones. Oh, I hope to goodness the Lord don't ever send me over there. Amen. For the most of the people, you probably won't ever get to go. Amen. But to me, I didn't have to go. I got to go. Uh, and I had me a time while I was there too. I, I was glad to get back, but I had me a time. Amen. Things was different over there. Amen. Uh, eating at a different time, sleeping at a different time. Man, it's hard to go to bed four o'clock in the evening. It's dark over there, but I'm used, my body says, well, you still got four or five more hours to be working, and I was trying to go to sleep. I'd get up and go eat breakfast and go back to bed. <laughs> Uh, for a few minutes, take a nap. I said, I can't handle this. Uh, and finally, I slept better the night just before I got on the plane. I don't know if I was homesick or what it was. But anyway, uh, I, 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 all I can think about is I'm going to get me some biscuit and gravy and some beans when I get back over there and, and a piece of bacon. I, I mean, they cook their bacon in the oven, and it's about half raw in the middle. I can't hardly get it down. I like that when you chew it, it snaps in your mouth. Hey, man, It's crispy. Uh, if you like that half raw bacon, it's okay, but I don't care much for it. Amen. Things are different. Amen. Got to get used to it. But see, it was worth it all to see the sights and to be able to preach to them people and to see the love and the reverence they have for each other, the love and respect they had for us. Amen. And the love and respect they had for their pastor and the excitability. Amen. Inside the church as they worshiped. Amen. Was worth going. Amen. Just to do that and to see the ones that got saved, amen, and I told somebody this, I could live five lifetimes in America and never been able to experience what I did in one weekend over there, amen, it's that's just amazing, the things that I experienced, I'm not going to go back over there to live, no, I'm not going to, I'm staying right here in America, I'm not saying I won't go back again, I'm just saying I'm not going to go back to live, I may go to some other places, when the Lord leads, amen, I'm getting ready to make another shipment, amen, of clothing, amen, and Bibles and stuff to Africa in just a few days, amen, we're gearing up right now, getting ready to start packing, some of it probably this afternoon, amen, may get it out this week, amen, we're going to continue on with the ministry, God's put a calling, amen, to love, amen, I'm, I've been in ministry for over 36 years, and I don't know about you, but I'm getting tired of this push, peg, push pull, or drag sale. Hey, man, I want to be able to, uh, uh, to preach to somebody that's hungry. Hey, Amen. Share the gospel with somebody that's hurting. Uh, hey, Amen. And, and, and be able to pastor to people that will respect the man of God. And when my people here, most of them loves me to death, and I love them, and they have respect for me. I'm not throwing rocks at my congregation, but I know the most of the congregations out there, hey, amen, the best thing can happen to your pastor is the Lord let him die. Brother Jimmy, you plain, I sure am, but I know some of your pastors. Amen, I don't want them to die, but it'd be better for them if they did. I'd hate to have to pastor where they pastor. <laughs> Amen, number one, you wouldn't put up with me, and number two, I wouldn't put up with you. Amen, to start out with. Amen, when you're selfish and self-centered, amen, you'd have to have a car jack to get you up off the floor. Amen, and a no spirit at all inside of you. Listen, folks, amen, we need to be able to get a hold of God and have the love of God, amen, in us. Amen, so that we want to share, amen, the gospel. You know what? America today, we have become so beat down and so selfish and self-centered. The most of the time, the only thing we can talk about and think about is how hard I'm having it. 
and what I'm going through and what I'm having to face. I'm gonna talk to some of you that's having terrible financial problems. You could do some things like I've done in the past. Call a realtor, it'll help you. Sell out, get rid of some stuff, amen. It's better, amen, to have an old uh, 1964 jalopy, amen, that backfires and the wheel wobbles like that if you can't drive over 10 mile an hour and be happy is to have limousines and everything at your fingertips and you don't appreciate God and you don't appreciate anything. Listen, in America, we are so blessed, amen. I thought this morning when I come in and the air conditioners is on, I thought, woo-wee, that's better than it was last Sunday. Amen, I didn't almost pass out before I preached. Amen, it's probably 71 or two degrees. It was probably 110 in that church over there in Portugal last Sunday. Amen, people standing packed in there like sardines. Amen, today, amen, I'm thankful for the things that God gave us. Amen, but my prayer is, oh Lord, keep the love of Jesus in my heart. Oh Lord, keep my passion for people. Help me, Lord, to love people and want to help people. Help me, Lord, to preach the gospel. Amen, in spirit and in truth. Lord, keep my boldness. Let me continue have the boldness that I need. Listen, give God praise. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll show you how much that they love people over there and how loving that they are. And in the motel where we were staying, uh, they, they've got those little electrical sockets that from Europe uh, because we were in Europe. Uh, and it's not like America. You don't have these like a two-prong plugs that we got on everything. Oh, no, they got a round one about this big around with two little holes. You got to go get an adapter that's got prongs in it. You plug your into it, thing into it, and you stick that in the wall. Just be careful. Don't get your finger over too far. Or you'll light up your life. But, uh, but but anyway, uh, so I was going to get that. So what I done, I went down to the uh, to the bottom floor and uh, uh, there was equal, even level in the back with the street. And I got off the elevator and then it was a like a, where they serve alcohol. There was nobody in there. Um, the bar part was closed. And I said, well, I got off on the wrong floor. And one of the attendants came up and said, sir, can I help you? He spoke English pretty good. And I said, uh, yeah, I'm, I need some kind of adapter of some type. He said, just go out this door right here, turn to the right, go down, you'll see a sign that says ATM. It's a Chinese shop, and it's run by a Chinese lady, and she'll help you uh, get what you need. And I said, all right. So I went out the door. He opened it up for me. And I was in there, and, and, and the Chinese lady, she spoke English, and uh, she began to ask me what I needed. And I told her, and she said, I've got just what you need right here. It was 3.95 euros, which has been a little over $4 in American money. I said, well, that's not bad. So I gave her the uh, the four euros, or I gave her a five, and she gave me a change back. Well, just as I was doing that, here came this man from the motel. He, he left the motel standing wide open. The door propped open. All all of that alcohol, the cash register and everything, walked down the street, went in that shop to make sure I got what I needed. That's where America was a few years ago. Hey Amen. They told me over there that a woman could walk down the street at 3 a.m. in the morning by herself and have nothing to be afraid of. They said it was the most secure city that there is in the, in the world, anywhere, no matter where. That's what it was voted. The safest place to be. I was glad to come back to America, but a little bit scared. I was a whole lot safer there than I was in New York. When I come back across the ocean, amen. But what I'm saying is people has fear. And some says, well, I don't know about hip and I don't know whether or not them people really get salvation or not. Well, I guarantee you, you keep your attitude and I'll absolutely guarantee you they won't ever get it. And it'll be your fault they went to hell because you was afraid they wouldn't get the real thing. So therefore, they didn't get nothing. Boy, you're bright, but not using much, much wisdom. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? We need to be reaching out. Amen. We need to be loving. Well, Brother Jimmy, I don't know where I can do this. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. And it was different for me because you see how fast I'm talking right now? Someone said, I can't see anybody interpreting you. Well, they sure did have their hands full, I can tell you that. There's things they couldn't understand, my Kentucky slang. I thought it was perfectly easy. I'd go back over it and slow it down and say it the same way I did before, and they still couldn't understand. Amen, what I was trying to say, because I'm from Kentucky. Amen, we got that slang like we got over here. 
You know what I'm saying? But anyway, I uh, finally made them understand. But what I'm saying is, I was able to preach, amen, had a greater response than I do in America, amen, preach is a powerful message I ever preached in my life, amen, I have to hold back and to wait upon God, amen. See, it's not about how much you jump, how fast you talk, amen, it's whether or not the people are listening and whether or not they believe, amen, when you share the word of God, that makes a difference, amen, Jesus went in into many places and where he went, amen, hundreds were saved, hundreds were delivered, hundreds were healed, but he went into one place where there was nobody saved, nobody healed, very little that he done that touched anybody's life and it's simply because they did not believe. They did not accept him. Amen. They would not accept the gospel under his terms. Amen. They wanted it to be the way that they perceived it in their mind. Amen. With no change. Amen. Stay in the comfort zone. Amen. Want to protect what we got. Amen. And, and, and try to be um, prejudice and don't think that you're prejudiced. There's a whole lot of people that says, well, I'm not prejudiced. Yes, you are too. You wouldn't help somebody if a different colored skin, you'd die for you did. You'd burn your money up. Boy, I'm plain, ain't I? You'd burn your money up for you'd send it to a hungry family. Amen. Over on the ocean, that's just how selfish your people are. Amen. We could hold our head back and say, I'm not prejudiced. I, uh, folks, you don't know how many people uh, uh, that was there of different cultures. They, they got up and they welcomed all the different countries into this multicultural thing that God uh, sent me and, and, and I invited Brother Allen Harper to go with us uh, over across the ocean. Amen. Different colored skins, different nationalities. Man, it was wonderful to see us all come together. Amen. I got a glimpse of heaven. You surely don't think that everybody in heaven is going to be a 50-year-old white man. Hello? Testing. One, two, one, two, three. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? Amen. But see, God loves everybody. He made everybody. We're all equal. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Man, it was a joy, amen, to hug them people and to preach to them people. And they were hungry for the word of God. Amen. They had one man over there. They had a tourism company. He had just opened it a few weeks ago. He wanted us to come and pray for his business. So we went to his office, sat down at his desk, circled around the room there, five or six of us, uh, and we prayed uh, uh, for his business to prosper. You know what he done? He went and spent the biggest part of the day giving us a tour free of charge. Amen. See, when God opens up things, amen, the possibilities are limitless. Amen. The Lord said, I want your joy to remain. He, uh, I want your joy to be full. I want you to have the fullness of the gospel. You cannot have the fullness of the gospel. You cannot have everything that God wants you to have when there's hard feelings and when you're full of reservations. There's some people today, amen, their mama should have named them Reservation Wilson a reservation Jones. They got a reservation about everything. Well, I just wonder whether or not they're spending the money like they need to. I just wonder or not if it's real. I just wonder or not if they're going to get killed when you get over there. I just wonder or not if they'll lock you up. Now, why would they want to lock me up? Hey, man. Hmm. Well, Brother Jimmy, they could. They probably could. They could lock me up in Glasgow because they got me confused with somebody else. Amen, it could happen anywhere. We just look for something, uh, reservations, uh, amen, fear. Uh, I don't know, and I don't want to be a part of anything. Uh, listen, mm. when are we going to get out of our comfort zone? Amen, people are miserable. Uh, amen, uh, they're, they're so picky. They're so touchy over everything. Well, that church over there, I don't know where I want to go. They had a split in it a few years ago. Well, if you was real smart, you'd know that yours did too. How you know mine did? Because it's in America. There ain't no churches that ain't had a split in it. It just might have been in 19, uh, uh, 1747, but you had one. You understand what I'm saying? You just ain't traced her back far enough yet. Amen? Listen, there's problems everywhere. It's not about whether you had a split or not. It's whether or not you got over it, whether or not you really know Jesus or you're full of baloney and religion. 
Hey man, most people's full of baloney and the rest of them's full of religion. We need to get full of Jesus. When we get full of Jesus, everything's going to be all right. I'm going to have to quit preaching before the sun goes down. Amen. Stand with us. Those that are watching my TV and by radio, God bless you by live streaming. Tune us in tonight. Be back again at about 6.45 tonight. God bless you. We appreciate you being part of our service here at the Shepherd's House, Glasgow, Kentucky.